Not only that, as a woman, as I travel, I almost exclusively use shared housing. I have stayed, and I do a lot of traveling, heading out of the country for the next almost four weeks. Um, last year, I actually did India, I did Ireland, I did Qatar. Okay. Um, Qatar? What's yeah, that? Qatar. Qatar. Oh, Qatar. Qatar. Yeah, okay. they got Qatar over there, uh, the Qatari zoo. But um, all I stay in, Airbnbs. Okay. I will not. I mean, if somebody else is paying, then I'm willing to stay in a hotel. Yeah. Usually, I request it's a boutique hotel. But after doing years of lobbying and spending that time down in Springfield, my days of staying in a hotel, you know, <laughs> 20 by 10 room, like that, I'm done. I won't do it. Amen. I vacation, I get Amen. large homes, and it's just, it's better. Okay. I want to be able to cook. I want to be able to stretch out. You want to feel, I don't always feel like I'm living out of a suitcase. I want to feel like Amen. I'm settled somewhere. Hey, uh, welcome my friends. This is uh, Joey Backwood, so welcome to Joey B's Real Estate 101. Uh, I'm here today and I want to introduce you to a friend and business partner. Her name is Monica K. Gamble. Uh, she happens to be an attorney and uh, we've been uh, working together now for uh, over a couple of years. Yeah, for yeah, over a couple of years. And um, <clears throat> the reason I have her here today is that I would like people to understand um, short-term rentals and short-term rentals are uh, one of the reasons why they're working is that they're the government is involved with them in different municipalities cities whatever they regulate what they're doing Absolutely. and it's important that you know hey if you're going to go down an amazon river you better have a guide right, okay because right. otherwise you're going to get bit <laughs> by a crocodile or a piranha or something like that but what's really interesting is that I, I met MK uh, over a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and at that time you were uh, you were working for Airbnb. Yes, yes, okay. I was doing um, kind of some lobbying and community work with them. It was actually one of the presentations out in the community. They are, were um, very active in the community, wanted to engage people at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how we connected. Is at one of these presentations. And exactly, I saw her, and I went up and talked to her afterwards, and uh, I said, hey, you know, uh, I. Um, uh, you know, I've got a house, it's just me and my dog, and I was thinking of doing Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And we talked, and she basically told me, what me and my partner, uh, Monica, uh, and um, we talked about it. And one of the things that, uh, you know, was, was really interesting is that uh, Airbnb has uh, insurance for a million dollars, or they call it insurance. And what it does is that, uh, you know, they, they cover you. Uh, or, you know, if you have some problems, you have some things destroyed, you know, a, a, a person wrecked something in your house, there's, there's, you can get it reimbursed by Airbnb. It's not guaranteed by any, by any stretch of imagination, but it's, it's a good thing. But shared rentals is encompassing using your real estate, and people can do it for overnight, they could do it for 30 days, they could do it for probably anything short of a year. Right? Yeah, so short-term rentals generally, and whether it's Airbnb or any other platform, what you want to really look for um, is, is the opportunities it can present. Um, what I like most about it is it takes a home. Most people think a home is their largest asset. Well, home is also a liability if you really think about it. <laughs> if it ain't generating income, if it ain't generating income, right, it's a it truly liability. is a liability. And 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 um, the truth behind, you cannot own a piece of real estate without paying on it, right? Whether exactly. it's taxes and if it's actual homes you live in, you have your utilities and a number of other fees and assessments that might be attached either through the city or a number of ways. As such, as it's Technically, taking money out of your pocket, there are an opportunity to actually put money back in by using your unused space. Okay. And one of the places you'll see that is also as we grow, right, whether it's professionally, in age, whatever else, you have space available to you, right? Exactly. And opportunities. We met, um, in my time in working in real estate, and I've been doing real estate work, and I am an, an attorney and both a litigator, but I do do transactional work, and I mm -hmm. help with a lot of fix and flips and buy and holds and a number of other real estate investors. And there are ways in which they can use these assets that they have uh, actively on a shared housing platform. Okay. And it's a way to generate income. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, I think, a couple individuals I've met over the years. There was a woman whose son had went, gone away to college, and she was using the spare bedroom mm -hmm. to help pay for some of those um, college fees. Okay. And All right. that was very helpful to her family. Mm -hmm. We also had a number of people, you know, they were in active foreclosure and were able to Airbnb out their properties. 
and generate some of their income. So that help them catch up under mortgage Absolutely. payments. Absolutely. Mag mortgage payments that are there. Um, it, it's also a way to, if you think about it, really rebuild community. So we're starting to move away from this. We're all on our devices. We're all involved in our electronics, our laptops, etc. We we've kind of put this distance between us and others. Okay. It's easy to access somebody at the drop of a hat when you want to off social media or a text message, etc. But how often do we sit around a table? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> really? I uh, I enjoy Airbnb so much. Uh, I enjoy. You know, the shared rentals so much, whether they're long term, short term, whatever. Uh, you know, I've met so many people, and I'll tell you what, it's like the window to the world. Yeah, yeah. I've had people all over the United States, all over the world, Absolutely. staying here, and uh, it was it was fascinating, especially when you got people that cook their ethnic cuisines. Oh, it's oh, fantastic. Yeah. Entry to different foods, opportunities, and culture. Okay, that's the good news. Okay, can you tell us what we have to do to get started? Absolutely. So okay. it's not complicated. The share housing platforms often will give you just a resource guide, which you can find on their page as well, to walk you through this. Um, one resource you have is you're going to need a, a listing, right? You create Correct. it on your shared platform. All you right. create your listing for the property that you want to put on Airbnb. First thing is get your property ready. Make sure it's able to host and accommodate somebody. Okay. Whether you're gonna do just your weekend rentals, your weekly or even your monthly rentals, right? Okay. Generate people. You have okay. people like visiting nurses that are looking for housing. You have uh, people, medical students who are looking for traditional housing, international students. Uh, people for corporate jobs who are in town for certain. People displaced by fires. I can think of three different families in the last year who've been displaced by fire and needed a place to stay. And when you really okay. are relocating, being cramped up in a hotel room is not really what you're oh, looking man. for. Oh, man, yes, 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 a yes. Month yes, at a time. Yeah. But, so you're going to get your listing. Get your property ready for okay. listing. Okay. Once it's all nice and um, ready, pictures. You want to have great pictures that okay. show and truly illustrate what you have. Okay. Right? You're selling your platform. You're selling your home over others on a platform, mm -hmm. and I haven't had a chance to really look at it. Right? So I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel like it's safe. Okay. I want to feel like this is inviting and welcoming. Okay. So that's your second part. Thirdly, um, while you're getting this all together, you also want to apply for your registration number in the city of Chicago. Okay. Quite a few municipalities have registrations that are required. Okay. It is imperative that you look at whatever guiding laws um, apply to your city, township, village, whatever municipality. Okay. Okay. There's also some state laws and some federal laws that kind okay. of exist for some of this, but really focus on your municipality right now. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. 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 And. How do you do that? I mean, can you do you find out about this online? Do you Absolutely. have to show up? Okay. And you can do it online. It is um, quite a few of the cities, and um, we live in Chicago right now. Right. You can show up, you can sit down, have a conversation. There are really good people working in this field who okay. are willing to kind of shepherd you through the process okay, and good. answer your questions. But right. there's quite a few online resources for you. Look at where you're hosting and what platform you want to use because they're not the same. Each platform is a little bit different. And then you have some even larger platforms where you can see listings such like Booking.com, which might list, you think it's only going to be your Airbnbs, but they have your VRBO listings on there sometimes, okay. Airbnbs and hotels. There's quite okay. a few things. So. so they have everything on there. Okay, good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> you know, what's interesting from my standpoint, and I see this all the time, um, you know, people have houses, they've lived there for decades, they've raised kids, they've had families, and, and what happens? You know, kids grow up, they move out of the house, something happens, there's, you're by yourself, and what do you have to do? What, you know, what's been going on for years is called downsizing. Mm -hmm. Why do you need such a big house? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's me and my dog Ebony. I don't know where she's at. <laughs> rest this is me and my dog Ebony <laughs> over here. And, uh, you know, we've got three bedrooms up, one bedroom down over here. And uh, it really would wind up being a, a basically a flop house for my friends you know <laughs> i got a buddy that's going through a divorce another buddy whose fiance throws him out and you know they got so they come and they stay at joey's house and you know sometimes I, I usually don't charge them and stuff but what happened uh you know that we got that i got involved in this share um um short-term rentals it's tremendous i, I mean the benefits are, one, is I'm always improving the house. Mm -hmm. I am always improving the house. I'm improving the carpeting. 
uh, you know, we're working in the kitchen, we're doing stuff. So actually the quality of the house is increasing. Absolutely. But more than that, you know, like last year we generated over $27,000 here, which, you know, my expenses, you know, not including financing costs, were a little bit more than thirteen grand. That helps. Right. You know, I didn't have to go out and get thirteen grand and another fourteen. Absolutely. To you know, to, to have it here, and it, it you know what, what you was, what you were mentioning with sense of community. I mean, um, the fellow that's uh, shooting the camera over here uh, is uh, originally from India, and he's been studying in Boston, and you know he's here, and he says, Joey, let's uh, let's do this social media. I'm a, he's got a master's degree in computer science from Northeast University in Boston. And he's like in-house, like you're yes. my in-house counsel or sometimes. <laughs> got in-house you know? IT. Yeah, we got in-house IT. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it keeps you alive. Yeah, and the, the, the thing, the only th thing I have is I wish it was more publicized in 06 and 07. When did it even, when did, a, when did oh, these things wow. start? Wow, that slips my mind. It's been a Right around that time. Right around that time. It came into can, existence. Can you imagine the foreclosures that could be of see people just rented out Absolutely. a room? Absolutely. They rented out a few. And uh, man, I got you know, I've got some friends I, my age. They live in giant houses, three flats by themselves. And one of the nice um, aspects of the platform that you use is background checks. You know who's in your home. Yeah. And not only that, as a woman, as I travel, I almost exclusively use shared housing. I have stayed, and I do a lot of traveling, heading out of the country for the next almost four weeks. Um, last year, I actually did India, I did Ireland, I did Qatar. Okay. Um, Qatar? What's yeah, Qatar. Qatar. Oh, Qatar. Qatar. Yeah, okay. they got Qatar over there, uh, the Qatari scene. But um, all I stay in, Airbnbs. Okay. I will not, I mean, if somebody else is paying, then I'm willing to stay in a hotel. Yeah. Usually I request it's a boutique hotel. But after doing years of lobbying and spending that time down in Springfield, my days of staying in a hotel, you know, <laughs> 20 by 10 room, like that, I'm done. I won't do it. Amen. I vacation, I get large homes, and it's just, it's better. I okay. want to be able to cook. I want to be able to stretch out. You want to feel, I don't always feel like I'm living out of a suitcase. I want to feel like Amen. I'm settled somewhere. Amen. This is a great way. So I know who I'm staying with, and they know who I am. Okay. I think the most ironic, I went up to, uh, what was it, Toronto, maybe two years ago, August? This August will be two years, for um, Carnival. Okay. Did my first kind of um, shared housing in um, by room, and usually I get the full place myself. But it was so expensive; it was getting yeah, close yeah, to yeah. the day. I get so there was there. a family living there, and you got a room. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I stayed. Um, awesome woman hosted us. The other rooms were rented out by people I lobbied with here in Chicago. So it wind up being a huge kind of like a oh, coming home. house. But yeah, yeah, it was a coming home party. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome yeah. to spend the whole weekend with people I had already known okay. in Chicago and great relationships. And yeah. I did the same thing over when I was in India. Ran into a good group of people. We connected with people we knew in Ireland, even back in the States. Some of us had a mutual friends in a play. Fantastic. <laughs> Real community. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, you're uh, you're available and you've got, uh, well, you're going to be gone for what? Next couple of weeks, but I, um, I obviously have coverage and my firm handles quite a few different areas, litigation and real estate. Um, we can help you get situated and set up. Some people are doing this as a business. Some people are supplementing their actual income with this. Okay. Or if you have any questions and concerns, just sit down and have that conversation about what's my exposure here? Possible liability. What can I do next? How do I uh, just kind of feel like you have someone on your side when you're okay. setting it all up? Yeah. Good, good, good. All right. Well, listen. Um, hey, if you like this, like it, share it, and subscribe. And we'll have some information over here on, uh, on Monica K. Gamble, uh, attorney and wonderful person and That's a good great. friend. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey, my friend. Hey, thank you for watching Real Estate Investing Mantra. If you liked it, like it, share it, and subscribe. We've got a lot more stuff coming down the pike. Thank you.